Hey, Blobbies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to the Blob Game, where we are blobbing our way around the blobbing map, and Granada is next to fall. I think it's about time we kind of talked through our current strategy. The basic formula will be, every time we get a city flipped, we're going to want to try to maximize growth and housing in that new city in order to facilitate a, uh, a larger population growth to the point where we'll start to trade old cities for farms and stuff like that because like they don't need them anymore whereas this city if it can like maximize its growth and housing it will for sure be able to uh to get much bigger also i'd love to get a holy site in here now my question is moksha is currently assigned to gyor so I'll buy a holy site in here. This city also needs like a lot of builders. Cuenca definitely could use like a builder. There's a few farms we could throw down, which would give it a little bit more housing room. But I think getting the granary, uh, maybe not so much the watermill, but definitely getting the granary and the holy site in here would be a decent move. And I'll probably just like build a granary, go for a builder and then move Moksha over here to actually buy the, um, buy the holy site. We just want to try and grow any city that's within like loyalty range of an enemy city as fast as possible. And we want to use our faith to buy things like Gurdwaras because it'll, you know, it'll eventually pay itself off in faith. And also the growth is really nice too. Um, yeah, but we want to maximize using our gold for, for growth. Um, but we also want to make sure that we're not using gold where it doesn't need to. Like we could theoretically buy the granary and Prasad here, but that's not going to make a difference to the current loyalty of this hung Hungary situation because Hungary you know, there's too much loyalty here. So we're going to take the slower approach with these cities. Maybe I'll buy a Prasat and then Faith buy a Gurdwara, but that's about all I'm going to do. And then otherwise I'm going to slow build these next two buildings. And then this city will just slowly and surely grow, grow, grow. I think Via Pura actually needs more tiles. So I'm going to spend a little bit of money to buy up those close tiles so the city can actually grow a little. Now Kali is flipping to me in six turns. This is not going to be a useful city for loyalty for a long time, but it will, you know, it has an entertainment complex, so it will have a place. It would be good, I think, to pick up things like sewers and food markets. Food markets are probably going to formulate an important part of our strategy. We also need to maximize our gold income in some of these back cities so that we can just pump infrastructure onto the front. Now, we also need to start thinking about military Stuff. Although we probably don't need to worry about military until a little bit later in the game because we're not technically ahead scientifically of anyone that we need to use a military on. Maybe we could justify using a military on Hungary, but we're still only on par with Hungary, which kind of tells me that I would be more inclined to do commercial hub investments to try to maximize my gold income. Now, really looking at Kampong Sve, I am already working the commercial hub to maximum capacity. In fact, we're working basically all of these. So I think... Do I want to add another district in here? You can make an argument for adding a preserve. Preserve would give extra. No, I think I think we skip the preserve. And instead, we just start pumping commercial hub investments for the gold. And then also, uh, the great merchants will also give us some good empire-wide bonuses. Whereas a place like Indrapura, maybe it's better if I go for a stable and an armory and stuff like that. Yeah, that kind of appeals to me a little bit. Nice. We're picking up a lot of era score from building things like theater squares in our capital. Um, probably be a good idea to get a factory and a workshop in here and a coal power plant because that's worth some era score, I believe. I need lots of builders on my front line. I am pumping out builders from Anchor Watt, but it's probably not at the pace I need to. I might need to dedicate a second city to um, builder production. Maybe Kampong Sve is that city. Well, we'll see. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm going to need I'm going to need more builders because every time I acquire a new city, I need to like completely rework their entire economy. Grabbing a couple of Inquisitors as well on the front line over here in the southeast to try to clean things up. There we go. Te Poco Hiwi has flipped, which should give me Era Score. Perfect. So grabbing these cities with Era Score is, 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 is giving me a big advantage. Let's go ahead and grab a granary in here. This city needs builders. Um, we will get to work on the monument. But yeah, we definitely need builders in here to just slam down a bunch of farms. Because I believe this city, if we check our range... Well, it only really exerts... Uh, pressure on Panama so it's still important to do but this is this is probably like a one to two builder city um, not enough that I would actually spend gold on it but I would definitely send a hard built builder over there 
Moksha is established in here, so let's go ahead and faith purchase the holy site. And just for the sake of it, I'll also faith purchase a neighborhood somewhere. There's a plus five right there. That'll get me some era score. Just so the city has a little bit of extra housing room. Uh, and then it's going to be rebuild these. And then we're going to reassign Moksha to Kuenka so that we can get the holy site pressure pumping in this city as well next. Religiously flip Kuenka as well. Now it has my religion, so the holy site will actually do more. And there's our second Caraval, who will just set off on Auto Explore. Hopefully they'll help me circumnavigate. Because that's one of my major goals right now, is to get a circumnavigation. I think it would be nice, since I have access to coal and iron, to, um, to pick up railroads now. And maybe grab myself a military engineer or two. That way I can move builders and stuff to the front line easily. Mali's offering me a relic. I'll grab that relic, thank you. You can have my little bit of coal. But yeah, if I can, if I can build some railroads to the front lines, it means that these like builders that I'm building here have just a lot more mobility than they otherwise are advertised as having. Boom, we completed the first Civic from the new era, the modern era. There's mass media. And Kali just flipped to us. We will keep that for ourselves and pick up more era score. We're already halfway to another golden age, and there's another 18 to 38 turns in here. Uh, this city's going to need serious help. It does have an entertainment complex, but I think I need to basically purchase the granary in here and then slowly work on a monument and get a builder down here to make this city happen. Um, it might be able to get a holy site next to one, two, three, one of these river tiles, but it just needs a lot of builder charges just to actually build it up because it's got terrible housing. It's just, a, it's just in a rough spot, really. Getting access to conservation would be nice for three envoys, so I will quickly grab that. Although, is there... Mm, maybe we'll see. Uh, John Jacob Astor is worth 500 gold and two envoys. Now that is quite worth it. So I have Divine Architect. I'm trying to think of what else I might need. I don't think I really need anything. Except for maybe more governors for extra loyalty boosting, just like the whole cities that I take. I'm happy with all of these things. The only thing I would maybe consider changing is scripture at this point. Like maybe liberalism it actually just gives me more yields across my empire. Um, heartbeat of steam is quite good. Campus adjacency. Culture industry. Well, I guess I can't really plug these in until I get a better government. Colonial taxes might be useful. Let me have a little quick look. Uh, but yeah, all my cities are on Pangaea Ultimate except for over here. So that's not really a viable move. Definitely should consider settling a city in here and up here, maybe in the near future. Yeah, the only economic card I would consider is plugging liberalism in here, but I think I'm going to leave scripture in because that's actually, this is the same amount of food um, boosted, and I'll just plug in craftsman and leave it at that. Thinking about the most gold or yields I can get in general, I have a decent amount of commercial hubs plugged in, so if I put an envoy into Muscat, that'll scale reasonably well. Uh, I don't think I need to be Susan of Jerusalem. I think that's necessary. So I'll just hold on to this. Well, I guess I'll put one point into Ancient because that is like a tiny bit of extra science. Then I use that great person that gives you envoys. So I'll pop two more into Mogadishu just so, just so I keep getting my gold up because gold is going to be how I really sort of accelerate the development of my newly acquired cities to the point where they'll actually be able to um, apply their pressure more liberally to nearby cities. Um, I have to play a little bit conservatively with gold right now, but my hope is that I can change that. Oh, I do have a second city spamming builders. I completely forgot I was spamming builders here to send to the west. Um, that's actually fantastic. That's a, that's a game changer right there. So we can send these builders to the west, these ones to the east. So I'm going to need a railroad running basically through the middle of my empire so they can be distributed. Basically, I just need to build like a lifeline um, going each direction in my empire. How much would it cost me to buy a settler? 2,200 gold isn't bad, actually. I think that's a totally reasonable purchase. Granada in seven turns the only thing flipping right now although some stuff should be getting close with the rate that these new cities are growing ah i forgot to buy an entertainment complex in here well i guess moksha was moved out too quickly to be able to do that we have access to steam power so we can start building railroads once we finish this armory we can crank out military engineers and that'll just speed up my plans it won't really significantly change them I should think about sea levels changing because people are starting to produce CO2 emissions. It's probably not an immediate priority, but it's something to think about. I definitely want to get stock exchanges because gold is like a big part of my plants. Holy site and aqueduct finished in Mahendra Pravara, Prav Parvata. So the city is growing rapidly. It's producing well. It probably could just use like a couple, you know, more farms on some of these key tiles. Like this city doesn't need some of these tiles anymore. Um, because it's, it's not in the loyalty 
section so I can kind of let the city starve. Well, not necessarily starve, just it doesn't need as many tiles, right? It's basically it. Whereas this city could use a few more tiles. So I'll give it a few more tiles. Then it is in range to apply pressure here. So I think an entertainment complex absolutely makes sense. And now I think it would be viable to move Amani. Let's come into Cuenca. Let's go ahead and faith purchase the holy site. I'm just looking for like a plus three. I'll take a plus three on a reasonable tile. There you go. A four food farm tile. And then I would like to use my faith to also get a neighborhood. There's a plus five neighborhood. I would take a plus four. There's a plus five right there. Well, I don't want to eat into Kali's tiles actually. So I'll take that plus five right there. Faith purchasing. Let's get the monument and the sewer. So up to 32 housing in here. Um, in terms of gold purchasing, let's do shrine. Then grab the Prasat, boom, and then we'll faith purchase the Gurdwara. So now the city has a 42 food surplus, which means it should be growing at like an increasingly insane rate. And I'm just waiting for two more population in here and I can slam down an entertainment complex and start running these bread and circus missions. Now, I think Nagara is actually out of range to actually apply influence across the map anymore. So I can kind of turn this into more of an economic city or maybe get back to building Huey Toa Kali, which again means that more frontline cities like Gyor and Kali can actually cannibalize tiles from previous cities to try to push their growth and stuff up. We got the armory, which means military engineers. I think getting three, let me see, how much coal do I have access to? I have one set of coal plus another coal there. So I think I could afford like pretty easily for military engineers building railroads constantly should be pretty sustainable for me. All right, we have the holy site, we have the commercial, we have the entertainment complex, we have the aqueduct. The only thing missing here is um, commercial hub investment or maybe pivoting towards a military production city. It's a pretty productive city, all things considered. So I think an encampment isn't like the most offensive idea. We're going to want a few encampments throughout our empire. We found the Galapagos Islands. Interesting. Where did we actually find those? Ah, they're over here. Unworkable, unless you settled like right there, which is theoretically settable. settleable. Catastrophic eruption where? In the center of my empire. That's not a big deal. This can easily be recovered um, relatively quickly. So we definitely want to pick up replaceable parts. And we want to pick up replaceable parts for two reasons. First of all, for food markets, which is just another way to convert production into food, but also because it gives us access to the mechanized agriculture, which gives plus one food to every farm for every adjacent farm improvement and a little bit of production to pastures, which kind of makes pastures better in the late game. Got Holy Site, Commercial Hub and Aqueduct in here. I think a stock exchange is a reasonable thing to do, although we do need to think about our power consumption. Likely we won't have much power consumption until the very, very late game. But uh, a stock exchange represents a significant chunk of potential gold in the late game. So getting it upgraded seems like a reasonable choice to me. Now, this era is ending in 10 turns with a dark age, which means we're going to lose 40% of our empire to loyalty. And so it is time to begin the construction of the military or the, the updating of our military. Now, I think I need to avoid researching infantry uh, for a little while and instead make our way towards oil. As much as I want replaceable parts, this is like the worst time in the game to research it. So I'm just going to hold off for a little while, just a little while. Uh, so loyalty is going to be an issue in a lot of our cities. If we take a moment to look through our cities, we can probably predict which cities are going to be the ones that flip independent. Most of my cities have like good positive loyalty but anything with low positive loyalty is going to struggle like maybe Cali is definitely a foregone conclusion I think that one will flip independent and a lot of this stuff over here to the west will also flip independent and the terrain isn't really open enough for me to declare or like to to fight a general war a lot of this stuff down here to the south might have to go so we'll have to see how it all flips out for me I'm going to start producing military units, of course. Uh, anything that I can do in under 10 turns in any of my cities that becomes available for military production, I will, of course, be doing. Now, the one big danger I have here is um, my cities are going to be flipping independent, and I, I'm going to have a really hard time flipping them back. It's actually very uncertain what will happen. I kind of don't know, and, and thus I'm kind of curious to see. A city has reached 20 population, a little bit of error score. I mean, I, may, I gave it a really good effort, 
to get enough error score, but it really wasn't enough. Consider, I think I needed like 60 points and I got half of them. It was just way too expensive. Three golden ages in a, in a row is hard to sustain, you know? Let's unlock our government and plug in production towards um, normal units. We'll take out conscription and we'll also put in production towards cavalry units. This way we can maybe get a few extra units out a little bit sooner. Oh, I didn't mean to make an ironclad. Let me just delete that. I don't want to make ironclads. It's like the antithesis of what I want to be doing right now. I want to be making land military. Granary, Gurdwara in here. We definitely need to build the aqueduct. This city just needs a builder at some point. And our first start of the railroad has begun. Railroad will make managing such a large empire so much easier. Like insanely, insanely easier compared to how, we're, how hard of a time we're having right now. Granada did flip independent though, which is a good opportunity for me. I think we take suzerainty. No, I don't think we care about Jer uh, Jerusalem suzerainty. I do think though we take um, two points into Muscat to get that little bit of extra gold. And then maybe like more points into like Wolan and stuff to get that military production across our empire. The faster we can make units, the better off we will be, in my opinion. Earning, earning um, error score isn't actually a terrible thing for us here because it does lower the loyalty penalties we're going to have in the next era. Now, the good news is I don't actually ha have steel. So at least the cities that spawn won't have inherent defenses. And I'm pretty sure if they don't already have walls, they shouldn't spawn with walls. I could be wrong about how that works. But I'm fairly certain it works like that. Boom, we got access to our first power plant and we got access to military science. So now we got coal power shooting out from this city, providing power to the heartland of our empire. Um, it would be good to get an encampment in the city, I reckon, to increase our military production. I'm trying to think of a good spot to put it. Not really great spots. I'll get rid of the maze. I'm okay with getting rid of the maze for an encampment that allows me to build military more effectively. So we're going to be entering in, into the phase of war, which is not a good or fun phase of the game, but it is a necessary one. We circumnavigated the world for five era score. Beautiful. We're up to 200. I mean, we were actually very close to achieving a, uh, a golden age. We just didn't quite hit our goal, which is a bit unfortunate, but it's kind of to be expected. You can't really expect too much of an empire like this. Um, we're like, we, we'll give things our best effort. But it doesn't mean that we're going to make it. You should start to see my military strength actually shoot up uh, every few turns. And, uh, okay, so the situation is bad. But we did just get mobilization, which makes my life a little bit easier. But welcome to the new Khmer Empire. We are in crisis. This is like the crisis of the, of the Khmer Republic here. We are losing loyalty everywhere everywhere uh, now the nice thing about some of these frontline cities is that i will be able to recover some of that loyalty using governors wow minus 20. oof i forgot to move my units out of this city uh i guess we just get off a quick free pair of pillages here and that'll help fuel my economy yeah, the minus, the minus 22 plus loyalty per turn in some of these cities is rough. So there's going to be like a count. We're going to have to do a counter offensive to recapture our own cities. Um, but they have really high combat strength is one of the big problems that we're going to run into. So let's go ahead. I, I need NIDER. I think NIDER is the most important thing I get access to here. 800 gold gets me 100 NIDER, which gets me a couple of upgraded line infantry on this co on this side of the conflict. And then a couple of extra line infantry here when I have the gold in my treasury. We're going to have to like burn, burn some goodwill here or, or burn some resources into the economy of our, of our neighbors just to pick up the gold we need to um, upgrade our economy and our military here. But now we have line infantry. I think we can head, we can pick up oil and then go to regular infantry. I think what we'll do is we'll go oil, artillery, infantry, flight, and we'll just have a very oil-heavy army. We have a relatively big empire and we have a little bit of time before things really get bad. Uh, there are a few cities kind of flipping the wrong direction for us. But maybe once we stabilize a few of them, we should be fine. So let's think about our approach 
to recovering from this situation. Man, it's actually just so bad what's happened here. So I think this western front is less important to me. These should be recoverable relatively easily. I think I need to continue to push in on Colombia. So Loja, Cuenca... Uh, Loja and Cuenca are going to be my two priority cities for recovery. I think that's what we're going to be doing. These are relatively strong cities, so it's going to take quite a bit of bombardment. Um, but I think we can do it, and we have railways already heading over here. 1800 gets me a Domri army, actually. Um, that is kind of a viable thing to do. They will turn into artillery, so let's start some Domri armies. Let's assign some of these kind of homeless governors to cities that are negative loyalty to buy a little bit more time. It's not going to fix our problems, but it buys me time. And that's important. Let's come into here. Let's kind of clear out our government here and go to more of a warlike government. I might switch into monarchy here. Let me have a little bit of a think about that. Collectivization might be really, really good here. Uh, it's a huge amount of production and food across my empire. Soft targets would help me retake my cities. For now, I'll plug in collectivization, but when I'm actually attacking cities, I will definitely plug in um, soft targets. I want Grand Army plugged in, and I would like chivalry. In terms of economic bonuses, I need to produce as much gold as humanly possible right now, so Merchant Confederation works for me. Triangular Trade is okay, but it's too bad in comparison to some of these. Oh yeah, I can use Fates to purchase military units. I need to completely keep on top of that. Okay. So we'll plug in these. We're not going to have the builder card plugged in because that's actually a low priority for us right now. Right now we're a military civ. And I totally forgot that I had like a huge bank of faith for this exact occasion where I can like just instantly purchase um, unit armies, <laughs> like at will, to start smashing these. Now let's have a look at a Domri attacking one of these cities. It's quite slow and weak, but it would do damage. That's the thing. It would do, it would do a chunk of damage. So let's fold Domri's into our plan, and let's also pick up Victor and throw him into a low loyalty city. Let's cancel the construction of builders in favor of building military or things that support my military. All right, chosen player generates 100% more grievances. I think it would be nice to be able to build... Um, I think it'd be nice to build encampment buildings faster, so I gotta put like a bunch of votes in that. I don't really care who wins this. I guess I'll vote up uh, Guitarja. I will vote up the Nobel Peace Prize in Physics. I'll put five votes into that. Otherwise, you know, I want myself to have lower grievances, I guess. Who knows if that'll work out for me. So encampments passed, Christina got the Diplo points. And actually that might be a worrisome moment here. There's refining, we have access to oil. Now, it's really, really critical. We found one source of oil and two sources of oil. Let's get builders onto that oil ASAP. They need to get improved. If we can get that oil improved, it's strange that it spawned on Marsh. Let's begin the fighting on the eastern front. So look at the damage these guys can do to a city. It's about 12 damage each, which isn't bad at all. Um, I also think I don't actually need to produce military units with my actual units, and instead I can focus on loyalty. Because I have 20,000 faith in the bank and I'm making 600 per turn. I'm pretty sure I can afford to spend a little bit of that money on, um, on military units. So where is my nearest military academy? It's probably in this city. I'll have to purchase it, like so, and then begin also purchasing Domries. So a pair of Domries should be all I need to retake Mahendra Parvata. The big problem I'm probably running into is basically everyone else is in a golden age except for Hungary. That's okay, I think we can manage this. Uh, in three turns, I should have my oil up and I'll start be able to be able to produce artillery. So I'm looking forward to that moment. And I probably won't upgrade my Domries, I'll keep them around forming a part of the um, military that I use. With the important caveat that I don't actually care what happens to them. Um, and I also don't care what happens to Gyor after I, I'm able to purchase artillery in it. Once I have my access to my artillery, I'm more or less happy. Now I want to see if I could secure more oil. Let's have a quick look at the map. Yeah, there's a chunk of oil there that I could secure and another chunk down here I would have had access to and another piece over here. So those are like four or three pretty important strategic cities because every single source of that oil lets me have more artillery which means I can begin to obliterate some of these cities and then start to hold them down uh, pillage all their tiles and let them die so that they starve and flip to me so I think by running bread and circuses in Hari Halaya I should be able to secure the loyalty of this city 
the war is developing over here. I think I can get a very easy promotion and start sniping off some of these some of these line infantry units. Let's pop down an oil well. That's our first oil well. Boom. There's our second oil well. The turn before we unlock artillery. Let's go around and make sure we cancel any cities making Domri or bombards for that matter. Yeah, it doesn't look like anywhere is producing them. Let's continue to do bread and circuses in Nagara to assert a little bit of loyalty in the area and help things along. Now, Tadmecha flipping independent will be annoying because it does have walls, which makes me inclined to want that to not happen. However, I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can change that outcome, basically, is what I'm trying to say. But we can start to take Mahendra Parvata back, and I don't think we'll need anything more advanced than Domri armies to take that back. I think it should be fine the way it is. It's these cities over in the east that are going to need artillery. But we still need 50 points to hit our next golden age. That feels very restrictive and demanding to me. Um, like, that honestly feels like a bit much. But there's steel. Now we can get our artillery going. Let's come in here and buy both sets of artillery. There's 1,600 each. And I'm going to want four artillery on this front and then two on the western front, I think. Kaboom, we shoot the city. Kaboom, we shoot the city. You step forward, you step forward. Slowly working our way in to take the city out. It's coming down. I've got eight turns to take it before it flips to somebody else. Now, I don't... I think... Does taking my own cities back through force count? I think it counts, right? It doesn't... I don't think there's any shenanigans there. Oh, wait. Am I breaking the rules of the challenge? Ooh. Oh, now I need to think about that. You know, I don't actually know. Am I allowed to retake cities I've already flipped during a dark age? I mean, like, if I can't, the challenge is basically impossible in Dramatic Ages. If it was a normal age game and it wasn't Dramatic Ages, incredibly possible. Like, I could totally do it. Um, because I would I would be hitting normal ages all the time. It would be extremely viable. But the problem is that I, I, I ping-pong back from, like, a positive and negative age. That's what makes it so difficult. Now, if that extra, extra added level of difficulty is part of the charm of the challenge, I mean, okay. Sure. I'm willing to give it the attempt, but I've just realized that I might be misguided here. Ooh, I tell you what, I'm going to have to have a think about this and uh, consult with the guy who issued the challenge. So I'm going to call that the end of the episode on a little bit of a cliffhanger on whether or not I'm actually allowed to use this military to just occupy the lands and force the cities down to a lower population or to retake cities I've already captured. Hmm, we shall see. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.